The Newtown Creek Nature Walk is a public waterfront space that was designed by artist George Trakas and is managed by the New York City Department of Environmental Protection. The space is open to the public 365 days a year during daylight hours. Once entering through the stainless steel entrance at the end of Page Avenue, one passes above a fragrance garden intended to help mask the disinfectant smells from the adjacent treatment plant and into this concrete structure. This 170-foot concrete vessel is intended to mimic ships that were built along the shores of Greenpoint during the 19th century. The original boats would have been twice the size of this vessel and were built from lumber floated to Whale Creek from Nova Scotia and milled where portions of the wastewater treatment plant currently sit. Looking through the portholes of the vessel's concrete walls, visitors can gaze inside the treatment plant itself. After passing through the vessel, there is a large turret with a joining corridor that leads to Newtown Creek. Look in the opposite direction, one can see the Empire State Building framed within the vessel. The Nature Walk opened in 2007 as part of the upgrade to the adjacent Newtown Creek Wastewater Treatment Plant, which is the largest of New York City's 14 treatment plants. The plant cleans sewage from approximately 1 million residents in a drainage area of more than 15,000 acres. The plant began operation in 1967 and currently treats nearly 20% of the city's wastewater. Upgrade works of the plant began in 1998, bringing the facility into Clean Water Act compliance and expanding capacity to treat 700 million gallons a day during wet weather flow. Funding for the Nature Walk project was provided through New York City's Percent for Art law, which requires that 1% of the budget for eligible city-funded construction projects be spent on public artwork. Artist George Trakas worked closely with community members and agency officials in conceiving of the walk to create a truly unique public space within a heavy industrial area. Once one arrives at the creek, there is a series of seven stone circles placed around a honey locust tree. On each circle is etched the names that the native Lenape people use to describe many of the land areas and water bodies nearby. The placard in the middle offers both a translation and the English names we use today in identifying these places. Next are the steps, which lead into Newtown Creek itself. The long granite blocks allow visitors to slowly approach the water's edge, as well as observe the tidal cycle and examine elements of the intertidal ecosystem that once thrived in this area, but was soon replaced with hard vertical shorelines. In addition to allowing access to the water's edge, the steps also provide an artistic and educational experience. Each layer has the name of a different geological time period, as well as the life forms and local wildlife that evolved in those time periods etched into the stone. The oldest time period begins in the water, and the most recent is on drier land, referencing the evolution of life on the planet. At low tide, the triangular cavities act as tide pools and are now home to marine wildlife like mussels, clams, and enemies, seaweeds, and active visitors like crabs, shrimp, and various fish species. Make sure to be careful walking here as the steps can be slippery and water quality is often unsafe for primary contact. The upper triangular cavities are also planted with a variety of native plants that are adapted to saltwater shorelines. In between the two weeping willow trees sits a 1,400-pound granite sculpture in the shape of a large bollard, an ode to the shipping industry still present along Newtown Creek and visible just across the way. On top of the bollard is set a relief showing the original shoreline of the area as it existed before Europeans first arrived here. Much of the shape of the shoreline, as well as the depth of the creek, has been radically transformed since the 1600s, and this map shows the many streams and even islands in the creek that no longer exist. A small brass pin on the shore indicates one's position on the watershed map. Turning south, a long narrow passage runs along the western border of Whale Creek, a tributary name for the whale oil industry that existed here in the 1800s. Planted with native trees including swamp white oak, sweet gum, eastern red cedar, sawtooth oak, and pitch pine, as well as various small trees and shrubs, the path affords an interesting contrast between the tugboats, barges, and industrial plants that dot Whale Creek and the birds, aquatic fowl, and fish that depend on its waters. Along this stretch, seven recessed seating areas at the water's edge allow for easy canoe or kayak access. Throughout the nature walk, small metal plaques identify various plants and describe their ecological importance, as well as use by indigenous populations as medicine, food, and materials. Selected for their unique characteristics, color, fragrance, and fruit, the plants also attract wildlife and adapt readily to a waterfront environment. Across the path on Whale Creek is one of the city's 
sludge boat docks, where giant ships transport sewage sludge from the digester eggs to another treatment plant in the city, where the material is dewatered and turned into a nutrient-rich soil. The sludge boats usually come in once a day for loading and were specifically designed to fit into Whale Creek and pass below the height of the Pulaski Bridge. This concludes the tour of Phase 1 of the Nature Walk. Stay tuned for Phases 2 and 3, which open in 2020.